Hello friends, hello, it's me, Dana, and I am back with another video. This one is our top five, I don't know why I have 10, five worst sunscreens of 2023. So if you've been around for a while, you know that I do this. I have two videos at the end of the year. One is the top five worst, in my opinion, and top five best, in my opinion. So today we're gonna to start it out with the top five worst, and then at the end of the year, I will have my favorite, my top five, and that will be the last video of 2023 sending you guys off with on a good note and at like in a positive mind frame. But today we're going to talk about the worst ones. Now, caveat, I do not have every sunscreen ever made to man. <laughs> I don't have every sunscreen launched in 2023. And thirdly, these are just my opinions. If you disagree, that's okay. Like it's okay. I feel like I say this every year and then somebody still will comment like, but I love that sunscreen. And it's like, it's okay. It's okay. You can love it. I can hate it. I don't try to bash any of the brands. I just try to give you my thoughts and like how they have worn for me. But again, if you love it, keep using it. All that matters is you're using sunscreen. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. So with that said, I'm gonna jump in and I'm gonna start probably with my least favorite. And this one was really, really sad to me. And I haven't even done a video on it yet because it bothers me so much. But this is the One Skin OS1 Shield Broad Spectrum SPF 30. And this is the tinted version. So this is the brand One Skin. I have been testing them out for a while. They have a moisturizer, eye cream, and a body lotion. And I've been testing all of them out. And I feel like I've enjoyed them quite a bit lately. And so I was so excited when they came out with a sunscreen and they have a tinted and a non-tinted. I got the tinted just because the tinted is mineral. I think it's going to have a white cast. I was like, I don't need to try that, but maybe I will. But I tried this. <laughs> I don't think I even filmed, filmed the video, did I? Maybe I just haven't posted it. But oh my goodness, let me just show you. This is going to be like a pretty small swatch, but, and it's going to be hard to see on here because the problem with it is to get the protection that you really need, you do need to slather your face in it and you need to use a quarter of a teaspoon. And when I did that, uh, it's still not showing up. <laughs> the tone of it is so deep. Like we're talking medium, like full medium skin tone, which is fine if you're medium or deeper skin tone. But for me, it definitely didn't work. And it just was one of those things, like I can see it kind of oxidizing now too. And maybe if I just let it sit, I'm going to do that as I continue to talk and then I'll show you. I just was really shocked that they would come out with their first sunscreen, an interesting shade. Like if you're going to have it pull this deeply, then I really think you need to have a range. You should have light, medium, deep, and then it's just a bit more usable for people. But the way that this one is, it's, I can't wear it. Like I would have to use just the smallest little drop all over my face. And I'm not going to do that because I'm not getting the correct protection from that. And I think as a brand, as kind of innovative and science backed as they are, they would know how much sunscreen you should put on, but it's not evident from the tone of it. So there we go. Can you see that? It's already starting to oxidize. It's so warm. I look like an actual Oompa Loompa and I just, I hate it. I really, really hate it. And it's also like 60 bucks. So no, thank you. No, thank you. The next one that I have is a shame. This is the Bioma um, Moisturizing Gel Sunscreen. This is a clear, affordable brand. Let's see, it comes out, it's got a little bit of pigment, but the second you touch it, it goes in invisibly. It is a gel sunscreen, which also that little part, never fun. A gel sunscreen for me is usually a really big hit because I feel like they sink into your skin really quickly. But with this one, it never feels to sink in. Like I feel like, especially when I use the correct amount. Now, again, if you're using just a little, these sunscreens perform very differently, but I always try to use a quarter of a teaspoon. And for me, like even now, that small amount, I can still feel it on my skin. It has not sunk in. So when I'm using the full amount, it just kind of sits on my skin, which is just an unpleasant feeling because it is feeling like a little greasy and then it stings my eyes. This one, really does sting. So I would say if you have that kind of the tendency to have chemical sunscreen sting your eyes, this is going to be one that probably will. It is really affordable, but I just can't get down with it. And oh, and one other thing after it does finally sink in, it feels very, very tacky on my skin. 
So it might be a really good option if you have drier skin and you want to wear it under makeup. But for me, it's just not the perfect one. And especially with the eye sting, I'm just not gonna reach for it. Okay, the next one up is the Ole Henriksen Banana Bright Mineral Sunscreen SPF 30. I have a full review on this and I will swatch it out for you. And there's something interesting about this because this has the exact same undertone as some of my other favorite sunscreens, like the Live Tinted one, the, what's it, Hero one with the kind of orange undertone. And this has that same feeling to it, which I do love. It blends in very nicely. It's a good kind of primer sunscreen, but my problem with this is it is so tacky, like to a level that you, you just have to wear makeup over top of it. Like I have to think of this as a primer and not a sunscreen because if you do not wear makeup over top, your face, everything like flies will come and swarm and stick to it. I don't know what it is. It's just a very, very kind of tacky sunscreen. And it does also have this tendency, it's very hard to see here, but you can kind of see it takes a bit to rub in. And like you'll get these kind of patches where I feel like the coverage is uneven and you just kind of have to keep rubbing. I don't have a lot to say about it. I think it's a fine sunscreen. And if you do like that kind of orange undertone, kind of canceling out any um, colors in your skin, I would recommend just trying the Live Tinted one. That's a better option. And unless you really do want that primer consistency of it, but if you're just gonna wear it on its own, it probably will drive you crazy. It drove me crazy and yeah, not my favorite. Okay, next up. This is a cheap one from the Inky List. This is a polyglutamic acid dewy sunscreen, SPF 30. First sign that I wouldn't like it probably is the fact that it says dewy in it. And that's just a personal preference. You know, like for me, I don't need the dew. I can do, or I can get that dewy look if I just put on the right kind of skincare or makeup or whatever. But for me, this one is a huge fail. It leaves me looking like an absolute disco ball it's just a chemical sunscreen, so there's nothing fancy to it. And it does blend in, but it's chemical sunscreen. But for my skin type, it's not my favorite. I think there's nothing wrong with it, so I will be cautious to say that this is not like the worst sunscreen I've ever tried. I just think that it's really only suited for your dry skin people. And I wish that that said that Inky List would come out with maybe some more, more options, maybe a mineral, maybe one for dry or, or I mean for normal or for oily skin. But for me, this is just a big pass and I will pass it on to somebody who will get more use out of it. The other thing I think about this one is I feel like this is for like, you're just getting into sunscreen. And I kind of feel that way about a lot of Inky List products. So if you are just kind of like, I don't know anything, I don't want to spend a lot, this is a good option. So. Again, I say it's the worst, but it's really just the worst for me. If you want something a bit more elegant, if you want something that um, is going to maybe do more than just make you look like a disco ball, there are lots of other options and yeah, pass. Okay, this one is hard. It's really hard to talk about, but this is the Ilia CBN Triple Serum uh, SPF 40. This is used up, done and dusted. And here's the thing, I just bought a backup. So you're saying, why am I talking about it in the worst videos? Well, that's because it doesn't work for a lot of people. And I, I acknowledge that it's also $60 and it has the worst packaging known to a man. I talked about this packaging multiple times. You have to push this down while holding it upside down. So that motion doesn't really work. And then you get like this tiny, tiny, small drop. The packaging also becomes incredibly dirty. It's just messy and it pills on a lot of people, it pills. So those are all the reasons why you should not buy it. But why did I buy it again? Well, because I like it as skincare. It gives me kind of this like natural glow. Um, I think I have the lightest shade, yeah, tone one. So tone one gives me this like little bit of a tint, not a lot. I use it as basically like an additional vitamin C serum. And then I also use it as kind of a little bit of a tint if I want that and no makeup. I also can put makeup on over top of it, but what this is, the reason that it's so bad is because I think a lot of people go in with, I don't know, three, four things in the morning for their skincare, moisturizer, all these things, and then they try to put this on top and it pills like crazy. For me, I don't really tend to use a lot of moisturizer in the morning. I just don't need it. My skin is perfectly hydrated throughout the day so I can get away with it and I can put on a little bit of vitamin C in a serum beforehand and then put this on and it doesn't pill but it is finicky as hell and it's just a lot to work with if 
you want your sunscreen to just kind of like work seamlessly. And again, this packaging is garbage. In the end, I had to actually just open it like that and pour some into my hand. And I probably will have to do that again. But I don't know, I just wanted it again. I kind of like hadn't had it for a month or two and I decided I needed it again. So I wouldn't recommend it for most people, but if you're willing to be crazy like me, maybe try it out. <laughs> Okay, and then my last honorable mention of the worst, and I was considering putting this in the best, but I think it leans a little bit more to like the bad side, so I put it here, and that's the Naturium UV Reflect Antioxidant SPF 50. I do want to repurchase this. This is another one where I'm like, why? Why do I like it? But I like it. I do. And I hate it also. I hate that it feels very gritty. And it didn't always, at the end of the package, when I was kind of almost done, it didn't feel gritty, gritty, excuse me. In the beginning when I was using it, it didn't feel gritty. But maybe like uh, five, six of it, it felt gritty. You would put it on your face and you're like, am I exfoliating my face? I don't know. But it's very affordable, it's clear, it's so, so easy, and it's SPF 50, which I love. So for those reasons, I think I probably will repurchase it. Also, it's available in store at Target. So it's kind of one of those things where like, if I need a sunscreen just randomly, I'm probably gonna go into Target and get this one. But I wish they would work on this formula because I've heard others say that it's gritty. And that's just one thing that I'm like, why? why? Like, why does it have to be gritty? You're almost there. I feel like maybe it's kind of like a production issue. But for that reason, I am gonna put it in this video, but with the caveat, like I said, kind of with the Ilia, I'm probably going to repurchase this. I have repurchased this but those are the reasons why most people wouldn't like it and i would say like maybe don't waste your money on it but yeah it's it's a confusing one sometimes i am confused by sunscreens which is crazy i feel like i have a personal relationship with them <laughs> okay guys that's it that's the top five worst and my thoughts on them and maybe my personal beliefs <laughs> and i am going to end this video here and be on the lookout if you're not already subscribed put the little notification bell on because the top five best is coming at you before the end of the year and then i will probably think i'm going to take a few weeks off in the new year i don't usually take time off of youtube but i'm going to take some time off um, and not upload and then i will be back bigger and better next year so with that said, I enjoy you guys so much. Thank you for being around and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.